What's up everybody? My name is Christopher Marciano. Welcome back to Transparency the Albumentary. play a game. So not too long ago I asked my followers to submit questions in regards to anything they wanted to know about me, the music industry, my experience with it, um, and I'm going to do my best to be as transparent as possible. You see what I did there? Transparency, transparent. Um, and we're going to play a game called Sip or Spill. So if I can answer the question, I'll answer the question. If I can't answer the question or feel a little uncomfortable answering it, I take a sip. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. Lay it right. on me. How long have you been writing music? I've been writing music for, what year are we in? 2021? Since 2008. 2008. Who says 2008? 2008. Okay. <laughs> so what's that? Over, uh, over a little over ten years, right? Oh, don't ask me to do math. Mm -mm. Thirteen years. What do you do when you get writer's block? I pace. It's very weird. I pace back and forth, um, or I drive, or I'll write from inside my car with no driving, um, and I'll just listen to the instrumental over and over. The biggest one is pacing back and forth. I feel like if there was ever cameras in my house, I would look absolutely crazy while I'm writing because I'm literally just walking back and forth from the kitchen to my room to the bathroom, different places, just trying to get those words. Um, and then if I can't, very rarely do I stop and come back to it. I, I'll really try to get those words right then and there. But if I can't, I might let it go for a few hours or a couple of days and then come back to it. But very rarely I do that. Mm. What do you like most about making music? Is it the actual making music process or just music in general? It could be the process. It could be is there any aspect of it. So any aspect of it, I love performing and hearing um, people sing my songs. Mm. That part um, of music is absolutely phenomenal. One time for the two times for the the process of making a song, I love hearing how it ends out being, how it ends up being. So going from like this idea I had in my head to it becoming, coming into fruition. When you get that email from the engineer and it says, this is the master track. on it and you get it in your email you play it back it's like ah most of the time sometimes you gotta send it back because they be trying it and putting some extra stuff in there that you did not ask for yeah. but when you get it back and play it just how you beyond how you expected it to be that feeling is gold mm -hmm. I'm not taking any sips yet <laughs> what three musical artists have had the most influence on your music? My biggest influence are definitely my experiences. So I very rarely use other artists to influence my music. Um, every song is about an experience that I went through. Artists that have influenced me, uh, not necessarily my music, but I will say artists who have continued to like push me or motivate me. I will say Paula Day 
definitely has that's the person I started out with and he has been he's really the person that I send my music to and if he likes it then I'm good like because he's such a strong critic so anything I have doubts about I'll send it to him and he'll say it's dope boy it's garbage um and we go from there so Paula Day and I don't know, there's just so many, there's a lot of people in my life, uh, independent artists, who have supported me. For example, Santo Silva, um, Ari Moon, who's on The Voice, phenomenal. Um, and so many different artists out there who continue to support me, but I wouldn't say influence my music, but just push me to continue doing music. What count that? Did you have a set idea of what you wanted your album to sound like? Yes. Um, I wanted, obviously, to put a mixture of different genres, all the genres that I love um, creating, and I put in one album. I also wanted to talk about, lyrically, I wanted to talk about the biggest moments in my life that I've had, the struggles mainly, and then um, the outcome of those struggles. So I did have, a, I definitely had an idea of how I wanted it to sound like. All right, what is your favorite song to perform? Favorite song to perform? Runaway. I'll say for some reason that single will never get old to me. Um, and there was one particular show that I did where I literally had to stop singing because the crowd was singing the words louder than I was singing. And not only do I have, you know, my friends and family singing it, but I have strangers in the crowd that um, were singing it that I had no idea who they were. So I thought that was pretty phenomenal that I have strangers singing my, my record. So that was, Runaway is probably the song that was, is my favorite to perform. What is your least favorite song to perform? Damn it. I'm at the sip on that one. Ooh, nothing. Nothing we can't get. No. I can't because it's. That song is like everyone's favorite, so I'll sip twice on that one. Uh oh. Don't upset nobody now. It's it's just a lot No, I'm not that's <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even, gonna, not even gonna entertain that. So one. the next question is, why did your album take so long? People have to understand, I was a songwriter for so many different artists who released albums. And when their albums came out, it did not get the hype that it deserved. And these were some absolutely phenomenal albums that I worked on. But there wasn't a strong enough plan or there was something that we didn't think of when it came to releasing that album. So I wanted to make sure, and to this day, I want to make sure that it gets the exposure that it deserves because I worked really hard on the album and I want to create the strongest release plan for the album so that's why it took you know years to release <laughs> this album but it's coming out so stop asking it'll be out this year right, so the next one is uh this one was says when will you write a song about us and I'm not referencing myself, so some, some, <laughs> somebody. I could already tell you who, who wrote that. Next question. <laughs> oh, you zip it? Oh, you zip it? <laughs> when will you write a song about us? I can't. What drives your inspiration to create your songs? Uh, my experiences. Anytime I'm having, you know, something going on in my life, the way I deal with it and get a, that sense of closure is I write go in the studio, once I cut the record, I don't even have to talk about it anymore. It could be, you know, someone in my life who did me wrong, 
I don't even have to talk to that person. As long as I put it down on, in a notebook and I get in the studio and cut the record, then I'm good. What are your studio habits? So, if you catch me in the studio, I probably have a hoodie on. I could probably even tell you which hoodie <laughs> because I have to be comfortable. I'll definitely have like joggers on. Um, so a hoodie, joggers, I'll have a fitted on. And the lights in my studio are either in the booth is completely pitch black. There's no lights at all. And my engineer thinks I'm so weird, but it has to be completely dark. So I feel so comfortable being, sounds so bad, it sounds so grim. Well. <laughs> I feel so comfortable being in darkness. Um, and I know a lot of people smoke and drink in the studio. I can't do none of that. I have literally every time I have a venti ice caramel macchiato, that is my drink of choice in the studio and water. So that's my studio habits. Okay. So are you looking for features or collaborations? In the beginning, I wasn't. I wanted to um, do everything myself. I was very, like I said before, I'm very hands on. I didn't want anyone to write anything. My album, I wrote every single song except um, one of my songs has a feature on it that's rapping. He wrote his rap. But everything else I wrote from beginning to end, all of it. But where I'm at now, I think because I wanted my album Transparency to be my life and my journey, I can finally say where I'm at now, I'm open to collaborating and featuring on any songs. I've been featuring on a lot of people's songs actually right now, which I'm really excited about. Um, there's going to be several songs being released soon with me on it, and I'm very open to collaboration. <laughs> now that my album is done, <laughs> stop laughing at me. Now that my album is done, I'm definitely open to featuring and collaborating with other artists and producers. All right, all right. So the next question, and this is not me, but it does say, would you do a song with me? So I just want to throw that out there and see if they you probably like know. They anything. didn't put a name or anything. So I just, you know, think on it. Okay. Think on email it. Email me. Because you probably be. Me out there. Email me. <laughs> <laughs> Whoever me is. Whoever, Whoever me is. is. So the next question is, do you have a manager or a team? I do not have a manager. Um, and I don't have like a... a distinguished team but I do have people around me who I turn to um, when I have questions and when I need some guidance I told myself not to get a manager and learn everything about what a manager does so I wrote my first contract I learned contracts I learned even how to engineer I learned how to cut vocals and everything that goes into that aspect I learned about distribution and releasing your own songs. So I want to learn everything there is um, before I get a manager so that when I do finally get a manager, I can have these educated conversations with my manager and make sure that I'm not getting taken advantage of. Um, and I feel like when I'm overwhelmed with what I'm doing, then I feel like that would be an appropriate time to get a manager. But right now I'm okay doing everything on my own. Uh, I know I, I'll get to a point where I will need a team um, and a manager, but right now I'm good. Alright, what is the most frustrating part of music? The most frustrating part of music... I think... Social media. When it comes to social media, I find myself comparing myself to other people, mm -hmm. other independent artists, um, or any like other artists in general. And I feel like it could kind of hinder us as independent artists um, when it comes to motivation, because you know we look at our numbers and have all these ideas of where we want ourselves to be, um, but then when you're comparing yourself to other people, it's like, damn. 
why why is there such an emphasis on social media? Why can't it be about my music? So social media is definitely the aspect of the music industry that is frustrating in marketing and promoting out of. <laughs> so what advice would you give somebody who is just starting out? Um I I I get this question a lot during interviews and it's hard for me to give advice to anybody because I feel like everyone is at, starts off differently so I don't want to give someone advice and it hinder them from um, their lane that they could go into uh, but what I can say what I feel like is in general sense to anyone starting out in the music industry is take the time to learn everything on your own um, so that you learn contracts, so that you learn everything that there is before you go into getting a team or getting a manager. Uh, because there's nothing, you can't buy knowledge. And the more knowledge you have about what you do and where your money is going into, the better the outcome will be for you. So just take the time to learn everything. And the next question is, how has your support been? So when it comes to support, I, and you can ask anyone, if I get invited to a show or a listening party, uh, I just got invited to someone's listening party a few weeks ago and I couldn't make it, but I purchased the ticket and I reached out to that person and said, hey, I can't make it, but... I bought the ticket, if someone else needs to come, I could gift my ticket to them. But I just want to show you that support. That ticket was going towards their um, their artistry and their EP. So I obviously want to su support their journey. And if I can not get to an event, I'll also purchase a ticket or I'll shout out or else buy them a drink from where I am. I remember um, cash shopping someone. I, I hate talking about this stuff though. Sorry. I, it frustrates me because I don't want to, and this will be a real moment, I don't want to like lay out everything that I've done for people because it always reminds me that like my expectations, what I expect people, my expectations and other people's expectations and their ideas of support is not the same. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's like if I'm not going to show up, I'll at least text you and tell you, hey, I'm not going to show up. or do something to show them that hey I support you even from a distance mm -hmm. so do I feel like I get that in return I will say that my closest friends and my family definitely but there has been people that I have surrounded myself with that I was really close with um, other artists and obviously I'm not going to mention names but I feel like I've done so much for them and I just wanted them to show up at the end of the day I just wanted them to say, oh my gosh, hey, I love your song, I love what you're doing, um, you have my support. And I was there from the beginning through all of your you know, trials and tribulations and your success and your, your downs and from the beginning before you got any success, but I don't always necessarily feel like certain individuals in my life do that with me. Um, so now I will I will never change myself and stop supporting other people, but I am very cognizant of like, okay, your time is valuable. There's nothing that's more important to me than my time, um, aside my sister. But if I'm seeing that I'm not getting that same support, now I will support from a distance and not be so available for other people. As fucked up as that sounds, um, but it's it's real. I can't right. keep supporting people who is not supporting me in return. Yeah. So, so with that being said, do you feel as though that independent artists should be supporting each other more? In of a course. Sense? Yeah. It shouldn't be a competition. It, and I, it, it sounds like terrible me saying that, but I do feel like people who I have um, been in the same circles with, they feel like it's a competition, and it shouldn't be. It's not. We're all here. Like, the more collaboration and the more support we give each other, the stronger it shows that we are. Um, so, 
I, I'm not taking any money off your plate, so why why not show that support? And I'm not over here looking like you need to have a whole banner that says Christopher Marciano. I'm just saying, hey, sh when I'm checking up on you and say, hey, just checking up on you, seeing how you're doing, if you need anything from me, let me know. Have that same respect in return. So if text messages stop coming your way, whoever's watching this, and I'm not so available, then you know. Right. So what is your favorite song and your least favorite song from the album? Um, my, I'll say my favorite song right now. I feel like I have a favorite song every week. Right now, my favorite song Right now, my favorite song is... The whole album? I know! <laughs> I'm telling you. Transparency. It goes hard. <laughs> it goes hard. Um, what am I listening to the most right now? I'll say there's a record on the album called Heart Belongs to You. I feel like that right now, I'm listening to that one the most. My least favorite, if I had a least, oh, if I had a least favorite, wouldn't be on the album though. That's fair. That's a fair answer. That's fine. So, what is your favorite marketing tool? Um, favorite marketing tool. I love using Canva, and you could create anything off of Canva, from T-shirts to flyers to anything. Uh, so you and that what I love about Canva is more than music you could create it for any type of business that you have and uh, I feel like videos visuals are super crucial when it comes to music so that's definitely something I turn to oh, last question what are you looking forward to I am looking forward to the packaging and the release of my whole album it's not just an album I feel like it's an experience it's a movement. So with the release of my album, there is so many things that are being offered with it. And I'm going to take my time in releasing those things, but I'm excited for people to see like, wow, he's an artist, but he's more than just that. Um, look at all these other things that he's offering with his album. I think it was like two questions. Two, two questions? questions? Yeah. I thought it was one. I think I, mean, I only said it two. Might been, it might have been two. I thought that was pretty good. You did pretty good. You did pretty good. Just before 8 this morning, Robert Broughton woke up to the scene of a serious crash right outside of his front door on Northeast Waldo Road. So let's talk about Crash and Burn. Jesus, I'm back. 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 I'm back.